Dr. Mohammed Hashim Kamali is a professor and a founding chairman and CEO of the International <coughs> Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies in Malaysia. He has held various academic leadership faculty positions uh, at numerous higher education institutions around the world. He has addressed over 170 national and international conferences and has published 20 books and over 160 academic articles, mashallah. And if I may say, uh, many of his articles are on my reading list for my courses, as I know many of you have studied them uh, and taught them. Uh, so Professor Kamal, uh, Dr. Kamali, without further ado, please go ahead. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shuroop, for your kind introduction. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <clears throat> uh, my presentation is about uh, <clears throat> Makasid history in jurisprudence of Makasid, a critical appraisal. Uh, <clears throat> I will be discussing, beginning the discussion with the reference to the Quran in Sunnah. Uh, in the place of the Maqasid therein. Uh, then a reference to the major contributors to Maqasid, uh, marginalization of the Maqasid by Usul al fiqh through our history. Uh, then a revival of the Maqasid in the 1980s, uh, conditions, the types of Maqasid, and a few other points of methodology. Now to begin with the reference to the Quran. The Quran is typically purpose oriented. Uh, we read many references to the priorities of Islam. Wama arsalna kaila rahmatan alamin with reference to the prophethood of Muhammad. The purpose of your uh, mission is uh, to bring mercy and compassion. And then with reference to the Quran, fihi shifa'un wa hudan wa rahmatan. This is the purpose of the Quran explaining. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains his own purpose. Yuridullahu bikumul yusra wa la yuridu bikumul. Then with reference to pisas, with reference to jihad, with sadaqa, with tuhara. In all of these, we find references to the purposes of the ahkam of the Quran. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the reality of the text in the scripture. And yet, through our history, the maqasid have been neglected. Uh, the uh, methodology of ijtihad, the usul al-fiqha, which expounds the methodology of ijtihad, has been uh, dominated not by the maqasid, by, by, but by the formulas of Usul al fiqh Qiyas, and Istihsan, and Istisla, and a number of other principles, when you compare them to the Maqasid, the relevance of those to the, uh, to the living um, uh, issues of the people, like protection of life, protection of family, protection of property, is somewhat uh, indirect. And this may be also the reason for the revival of the Maqasid. The Usul al fiqh has not really served uh, the purposes of legislation and decision making very well. Uh, and it is rather backward looking. That is why there is a fresh attention to the Maqasid. The reason for their marginalization has been uh, the kind of circumspection on the part of the fuqaha. They usually look at the text, the letter, the meaning in their textualist kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, position in their textualist outlook on Islam uh, uh, is different uh, when you come to the maqasid. The maqasid doesn't look at the meaning in of the letter and the word, but the purposes of the ahkam. And this is something that the fuqaha did not encourage. There is a story by Al-Misawi saying that uh, uh, a PhD student who had the, title, the word maqasid in the title of his doctoral dissertation in 1960, 
and the examin examination committee forced him to, de to delete the word maqasid and instead they uh, replaced it with ahdaf. Uh, this was the kind of the 50 fuqaha attitude uh, circumspection about the maqasid. Their position was that the, uh, the, <clears throat> the attitude of the uh, a Muslim should be to listen to the ahkam and submit to it and follow it, not to ask what is the purpose of that and what was the purpose of the other. So these were the kind of uh, uh, the kind of uh, the outlooks that suppress the maqasid through history. Um, <clears throat> uh, the jumhur looked toward the usul al fiqh not the maqasid. The Zahiris, on the other hand, said that we do not recognize the maqasid unless the text clearly tells us that this is the maqasid. And the Shia also said the maqasid are not to their imam. The Batiniya similarly. So the <clears throat> generally the uh, history of Islamic thought was not encouraging of the maqasid, yet there were scholars who paid attention to it, like from the fourth century, Al-Tirmizi Al-Hakim, he used to, he started using word maqasid, then Al-Juwaini, um, the teacher of Al-Ghazali. Uh, he divided the maqasid into these three types, uh, Dwaruri, Haji, and Tahsini, the essential maqasid, complementary maqasid, in uh, the embellishments. Then Al-Ghazali has a disciple, al juwaini disciple, Imam Al-Ghazali, the famous Al-Ghazali, he, um, he identified the maqasid, the ruri, the essential maqasid to be five, protection of religion, protection of life, protection of uh, rationality or intellect, family and property. And then <clears throat> uh, Al-Shatibi came and he was the major contributor to the Maqasid in his work Al-Muafaqat. He opened the Maqasid into a new chapter of the Sharia. Uh, then scholars like Al-Amidi, um, he recognized Maqasid as a basis of preference, al tarji Al-Qarafi, the Maliki jurist Al-Qarafi added a new maqsad, maqsad number six, which is the protection of personal honor or earth. Azuddin uh, <clears throat> Abdus Salam, uh, the author of Maqasid Al-Ahkam Fi Masalih Al-Anam, uh, he came up with the conclusion to, that the whole of the Sharia in all of the Maqasid are geared to human welfare. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is no, in no need of um, maqasid or maslaha sharia is entirely geared for people's welfare. Then we have this, uh, <clears throat> after the history of neglect in, in only in the 1980s that uh, we have a renewed interest uh, shown in the maqasid and then the revival of the maqasid ever since has uh, been continuing into four or five different phases. The first phase uh, was exploratory and historical. People started looking at the history of the ideas and then uh, at the epistemology in the second stage, and the theory of the maqasid definition and types of maqasid and um, how they are identified. And then in phase three, we, <clears throat> um, the maqasid were uh, taken as criteria of evaluation, and that the existing interpretation when they uh, contrasted did not correspond with the maqasid, they were identified and corrected. And then the fourth phase we come to <clears throat> the latest phase is the interest that is being shown in the implementation of maqasid. Like we have seen maqasid in governance, in Islamic backing in finance, 
even education and uh, information technology questions are being asked the islamic banking and finance for example that uh, they apply the rules of fiqh but forgetting the purposes of those rules because uh, uh, everything that we see in islamic banking and finance in the names of fiqh the purpose is to just find another way to riba uh, and uh, this has made the muslim customers in malaysia and elsewhere suspicious of uh, <clears throat> Islamic banking and finance, and there was the need, therefore, to bring the maqasid, the maqasid, the purposes of fiqh, what are those, and they should play a role in the transaction. Yet, uh, maqasid are also do not have a jurisprudence of their own. They uh, show you the way how to apply the fiqh, but they do not replace the fiqh. Uh, uh, when you say maqasid, uh, daruri, maqasid, haji, maqasid, tahsini to a banker, uh, the banker doesn't know how what to make of this. And therefore, maqasid also does uh, come theoretical in the implementation. There is a lot of talk about it, but there is um, the, sh the way is not shown how the maqasid should be applied in Islamic banking and finance. For example, one way of making this implementation uh, meaningful, purposeful would be that the banking transaction, the Islamic banking transaction, proceeds over a number of contracts. Mudara, Bamusharak, Murabaha, Bayamu'ajal, and so on. Maybe one can identify the purposes of these contracts and then tell the bankers, to then apply these purposes and see and that will be the kind of guided implementation to the Makassar. And then yet we have the, the uh, another phase in the uh, revival of Makassar, which is somewhat negative. This is the kind of excessive usage of Makassar. Everyone who likes the word throws it in and without really knowing much. And this is something that it has caused a bit of a problem in <clears throat> confusion on the part of the people who do not know the subject. Um, the reason that for uh, the revival of the maqasid is that the usul al-fiqh are failing uh, to respond to the needs of legislation and decision making. How should the maqasid actually relate to the usul al-fiqh? The usul al-fiqh is very rich with the methodology of ishtihad. The maqasid <coughs> um, uh, is purpose-oriented but does not have its own methodology. It is obvious that the two should complement one another. The usul al-fiqh and the maqasid should complement one another. This is the view of uh, Abdullah bin Ibayya al-Qaradawi, in others, but Ibn Ashur, uh, Tahir Ibn Ashur, al raisuni in one or two others, they believe that Maqasid have developed um, well enough now to uh, become the basis of Ishtihad by themselves without depending on Usul al Um uh, I <clears throat> think by personally that Al Shatibi, the master architect of the Maqasid, did not really see it. When he wrote the book, al Muafakat, uh, Maqasid is the fourth volume. The other three is on Usul al-Fiqh. And therefore, this idea of separation between the Maqasid in Usul al-Fiqh and leaving Maqasid as the Usul uh, behind and taking Maqasid as the basis of Ishtihad, and this is uh, uh, not generally accepted, and I also not uh, support it. Now, <clears throat> uh, Makasid, we said, are in three uh, varieties. Initially, Doruri, Haji, Tahsini. Now, Makasid, Doruri are the essential Makasid. These are <clears throat> indispensable for normal life, 
in society for the individual, like uh, we talking about protection of life, of property, of religion, and so on. Without these, normal life will collapse. Uh, and the uh, Makassid, uh, Haji or complementary Makassid, uh, without them, there will be some hardship, some difficulty. Like the Sharia grants a number of concessions, whether in fasting, in Salat, in transactions, and so on. Uh, these concessions are meant to make people's life easy, but they can live without them. And then the third variety of makasid, that is tahsini or embellishment, <clears throat> they really follow these two categories, Daruri and Kumar. They can improve. You may be like Salat is one of the maqsad zaruri. You can perform the Salat in a rough and uh, rushed way, or you perform it in a way that every part uh, is done in a way that uh, the desirable aspects, the Tahsini part becomes part of the Daruri and bring beauty to it. And this can be said. Now it is actually the, a great deal of the Daruri in the Haji in society in people's life has been really uh, uh, obtained. And there is a greater scope for uh, for uh, and the Makasit Tahsini, like uh, um, uh, protection of the environment. It is maybe not, not maybe it's Maqsad Zaruri when it comes to the essential primary question, but uh, maybe for the rest of it, it is um, Maqsad Haji. Uh, so the Maqasit, these three types, relate to all aspects of life. And uh, um, it, it, they, they are practical proposition, not theoretical kind of. Uh, then the Makasid also are divided in two other varieties, Makasid Amma and Makasid Khasa. When we speak of Makasid Amma, we speak of the whole of the Sharia, like uh, principle, like justice, prevention of hardship, prevention of harm. These are maqasid amma, relate to the whole of the Sharia. Whereas uh, maqasid khasa, some aspects of the Sharia, family law, criminal law, and so on, maqasid khasa relates to these aspects, parts of the Sharia. Then <clears throat> another uh, classification of maqasid is maqasid katraiya and maqasid zoniya. Uh, definitive maqasid are those that are established in the clear proof. Uh, this may be the Quran, the Sunnah, or uh, uh, Al-Shatibi's method, Istikra, in this is uh, inductive reasoning. There may be numerous references in the Quran to something without declaring that this is one of the Makassar. Uh, when you put them all together, uh, by induction, you identify that this is a maqsad. Um, <clears throat> like uh, there is so uh, many references in the Quran to, uh, to charity, to protection of the orphan, to, uh, to honoring your parents and so on. And there is so much emphasis, although this doesn't declare it is a maqsad, but these are the maqasad. Uh, and uh, Al Shatibi even says that the division of Makasid into these three types, the Ruri, Haji, Tasini, this is also the result of induction of Istikra, inductive reasoning. And then <clears throat> two other classes of Makasid. One is the Makasid of Shari, the other Makasid of Makalla. Makasid al Shari. <clears throat> are those that are identified by the Sharia. Uh, in Makasid of the Mukallaf, they people identify for themselves. Uh, like uh, the purpose of knowledge, for example, <clears throat> from the viewpoint of uh, the lawgiver, the, is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creation. The purpose of knowledge is to know him and to know his religion 
the purpose of knowledge for a mukallaf maybe to get an education and to get an employment. So these are the kind of purposes. Um, and lastly, maqasid asliya maqasid tabayyada. The normative uh, original purposes uh, and then the subsidiary purposes. The original purpose of marriage is procreation of the human species. The subsidiary purpose uh, may be companionship for elderly people. Uh, they do not create, procreate. This may be uh, <clears throat> companionship, friendship. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then we have uh, <clears throat> the uh, how are the maqasid identified? These are identified as I have already said by the clear text or by an indication um, by istikra. <clears throat> but uh, when you look at the text also, uh, you look at some of the signs like uh, uh, some ahkam has greater benefit, some ahkam, the benefit is repeated in different places. There is a promise of reward. Uh, there is uh, some of the um, makasid that the prophet and his companions, they have acted upon it. Uh, when you look at these, you identify the value, the kind of prioritization of the maqasid, that these are, uh, these uh, command a higher priority. And uh, <clears throat> um, istikra, which is the third method of identifying the maqasid, not only identify uh, the maqasid, but the awamir and the ahkam of the sharia, the awamir in the nawahi, the nawahi and the commands and prohibitions of Sharia can also be identified uh, by inductive method by istifra. Uh, <clears throat> the maqasid should also uh, fulfill four conditions in order to be a valid maqsad. It must be sabit yaqini, not disputed matter but there is clear proof in its support. It must be Zahir. This is Ibn Ashur for condition. A maqsad must be uh, evident. Uh, if need be, it can be proven. It's not a hidden factor. A maqsad must should be Aam. It is not partisan or uh, confined to particular individuals. And a maqsad must be uh, Tarb. It must be uh, exclusive applies to what is supposed to apply and excludes what uh, is not supposed to be applying to. And then <clears throat> and the scope of the maqasid, the last one or two points that I will discuss, <clears throat> we have seen so much interest in the maqasid. And the scope of the maqasid has also been expanding. Uh, we have seen <clears throat> Uh, the maqasid being identified in science, in technology, in uh, information technology, in contracts, and uh, <clears throat> others. Um, this, the question has been asked, should the maqasid be confined to these uh, maqasid, Daruri, Haji, Tahsini, and uh, 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 the kind of traditional typologies, or should we also recognize new maqasid? Ibn Taymiyyah has addressed this question and he said, look at the, uh, the Quran, there are so many other values and purposes, uh, fulfillment of contract, for example, uh, truth, telling truth, uh, trustworthiness, amana, uh, in commitment to the family, giving their nafaka, all of these, these are the maqasid and these are the ahkam. Uh, it's not confined to those three types or four types. So the ulama began to add new, new maqasid. Al-Qaradawi added uh, justice, 
uh, human dignity and social support, al takaful al ijtimai. Now, I have added, for example, world peace. Without peace, you know, all of these other maqasid uh, cannot really be fulfilled. And even science research and science and technology are indeed the dignity and standing of the Ummah in the world community depends on it. And nowadays, maybe protection of the environment, good governance. And these are also when we can identify these as the contemporary maqasid because there is evidence for it, uh, for peace as a prior, as a, one of the maqasid, protection of the environment. We can find support for the just government. We can find support in the text or otherwise in rationality, in istifra. <clears throat> then ishtihad maqasidi, my last point. Um, the point has been made that uh, the usul al-fiqa <clears throat> has actually narrowed down um, the ways, the, the, um, the, the methods of istinbat and methods of uh, extraction of the ahkam to fias uh, to one or two other things, whereas this this timbat should not be confined to analogy, but uh, it should be <coughs> like the hifz al akal, for example, in the traditional text protection of the mind. The typical example, for example, is given is uh, not to drink uh, intoxicant. Uh, well, this is one thing, but uh, uh, <clears throat> the question has been asked, uh, should we not make, make the same hefz al uh, the basis, for example, of the prohibition of all these uh, uh, corrupt uh, customary practices, for example, superstitions, um, uh, like uh, amulets and like uh, seeking medication uh, from all sorts of questionable methods that uh, really uh, uh, is not uh, uh, in compliance with the dignity of Hifz al -Aqal. And therefore, the scope of Istinbat, the scope of Ijtihad, uh, <clears throat> Uh, maqasidi should be wider than the uh, the kind of uh, ishtihad that uh, has identified been identified by uh, the usul al uh, <clears throat> The maqasid in usul al fiqh finally uh, we both are part of our heritage and they should be complementing and supporting one another but we need to look beyond the usul typology and relate the maqasid to the priorities of life in other areas. I will stop here and uh, give time to others. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Professor Kamali, for this fascinating um, presentation. And uh, it inaugurates our workshop uh, aptly and appropriately with the right kinds of questions. Uh, I'm very wary of time. So, uh, Dr. Anjum, uh, would you like to say how we are adjusting the program in order to compensate for the lost time due to technical issues? <laughs> Sure. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kamali. This was fascinating and really wide ranging and we will have, uh, I hope that you can join us for the next um, three days when a number of young scholars and really bright and brilliant, I'm very happy with the uh, papers that we have received and, and that we're going to be hearing the next three days. I hope you're here to engage them and, and guide them, but also uh, appreciate that they are much more critical and they're really down in the trenches asking questions of whether Maqasid can work. So I think that we'll have fascinating discussion. Uh, Dr. Asim Padela, we have uh, your question. Please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum Jazakallah khair, Dr. Hashim Kamali for, for your talk. I have a question about the social imagination and how that is wedded to 
Mapasid, right? So we talked about today the particulars and mechanics of where they might fit and the explanation of what they look like. But can you comment on the social imaginary that was embedded or should be embedded within uh, defining, conceptualizing what the Mapasid are? So you might say Ibn Ashura's model is five centuries or four centuries after Ibn Shatwi's model, and today Sheikh Radawi's model is different. So how do we uh, maintain or not maintain, and how do we evaluate these social constructions that are embedded within the maqasid, uh, either in the classical or you know, traditional views or the more modern ones? Where would they fit in? Most of the time we spent, so the most time we spent on talking about the classification of maqasid, daruri, haji, khas, am, but not about how the social construction of what the goals are, are embedded within their definition. Well, <clears throat> The history of ideas uh, is valuable. Um, civilization are constructed uh, are not uh, over uh, <clears throat> over time, overnight. Uh, we value the heritage, and we take it. This is what we are be, we have been doing. The Makassid before the 1980s were understood in one way. And since then, <clears throat> we are constructing new uh, additions to it. Uh, we retain some. We may be throwing out some of the outmoded aspects of the Makassid, but <clears throat> there are certain aspects to ideas that are time sensitive in age. Others are substantive ideas. When you say that <clears throat> the maqasid are in three types, the ruri, hajit, uh, that uh, can apply uh, today or can apply at any particular time. What social imagination, <clears throat> the way people relate to one another and uh, the kind of uh, <clears throat> the dimensions of uh, thought uh, in communication, in knowledge, and they differ. And uh, uh, the idea in the Makassid themselves is that we should be following the purposes of events. What happens <clears throat> in our time, in our life, we should identify uh, that with a good sense, with a good purpose, and construct our way ahead on that basis. Uh, we do not really advise to uh, stay with the old ideas. We have been renewing it, um, and that is what uh, uh, we would advise. All right, uh, David Drennan, please go ahead. Hi there. Um, I, had, I had a quick question. Um, I found it very interesting that you noted that uh, you uh, kind of agreed with Shatabi in that Maqasid um, was not separate to Usul al Fiqh itself. So I was just wondering, like, my interest is actually kind of like the, the relationship between the, the heritage and um, social change and so forth. So I was just wondering, how do, how do you see the tension between maqasid and as you're just talking about uh, <laughs> developing maqasid in the contemporary period, how do you uh, see the tension between that and the actual textual heritage itself? Yeah, the um, tension is not, <clears throat> the tension was between the usul al-fiqh and the maqasid. The usul al-fiqh was dragging us behind. <clears throat> and the reason why the Makassid uh, invited our attention and sparkled our <clears throat> interest to depart from this kind of fixation on Usul al fiqh and go in a different direction in order to, <clears throat> to make our ijtihad more purposeful, and not tied to analogy and to this and that, uh, we brought the Makassid. <clears throat> the Makassid themselves are not internally, um, you know, kind of uh, 
there is no internal tension in the maqasid because the maqasid does not have <clears throat> a kind of a methodology of its own like the usul al fiqh it doesn't have internal formulas like you have istihsan like you have qiyas or you have sadd al zarai the usul al fiqh has them but the maqasid does not have those internal ideas it is the purpose it tells you for everything you do look at the purpose of what you are doing and inform yourself by that purpose rather than following the letter the meaning the interpretation the literal meaning like we have been doing for so long <clears throat> so this is the new direction that we are taking i don't see that this will be internally tension <clears throat> laden uh it is it is uh, quite dynamic and it can relate to the realities of our <clears throat> time in age yusuf sufi please go ahead uh thank you dr kamali my question is a short one um i'm curious about the fact that the maqasid have become prominent in modern times specifically Uh, it strikes me that if the usul al fiqh is not doing the trick for the derivation of the law today while it did in the past perhaps the problem is less with the usul al fiqh and more with the way that it it's, that it's used today um i'm curious if you have some ideas about this uh, yes well <clears throat> i mentioned that the maqasid or people talk about it a lot there is a great deal of interest being shown in implementing the maqasid <clears throat> but when you actually come to implementation you are doing going back to fiqh and you are implementing the fiqh and uh, albeit you implement it in a more purposeful way but you are not finding some new reality the same i said <clears throat> in islamic banking and finance people talk about it that the maqasid maqasid but what do you make of the maqasid i say that the maqasid are theoretical they did not give us the best way of how to implement them i tell you the maqasid zaruri or uh, <clears throat> haji or tahsini of islamic banking and finance transactions I give you these three terms and I give you a few contracts what do you make of it it is not easy to implement the maqasid just by repeating it repeating it i'm saying that if you are <clears throat> if you are uh, methodical about applying implementing the maqasid in islamic banking and finance then ask the question next Oh, what does it consist of uh, the banking in finance consists of transactions that proceed over a number of contracts these contracts 5 6 7 contracts muraha mudaraba musharaka bay muajjal uh, identify the primary purpose of each of these maybe also secondary purpose of each of these uh, <clears throat> and then tell your banker that this is the purpose and apply this then you have put your finger on something but otherwise to mention and keep saying maqasid of this and that and you don't have a proper kind of approach how to um, implement it it doesn't going to work out <laughs> this is something that is a theoretical about it's not like the usul al fiqh the usul al fiqh has its own substance methodology the maqasid is just the manner of doing things not like it doesn't give you the rule of the law the rule of the law is still the fiqh uh, and the maqasid just tells you like if you are a, uh, <clears throat> a company director the maqasid will be good for you to tell <clears throat> you that put the essential first 
the secondary after that. And this is the order of priority. <clears throat> but it doesn't uh, give you a new formula or firqa, so to speak, to apply. And therefore, uh, <clears throat> when we come to the fourth phase, in the implement, which is the implementation of the Makasi. I say this, this is very much work in progress in every area, whether it is information technology, whether it is education, whether it is government, whether it is <clears throat> um, any other field, and you are about to uh, apply the Makasi, identify the Makasi, find uh, the best way of implementing it and go about it that way. But not just, you know, sort of uh, throwing the word uh, without working the details out. So these are the kind of uns uncertainties we have not yet really, <clears throat> uh, I may making it maybe a little more difficult than it should be in real life. In real life, we have purposes, we make decisions, we go about our purposes, and we are not really uh, looking at the books of jurisprudence in front of us, or the theory of the Makassi. There is a simple side to Makassi, and there is this more, uh, you know, a methodical topic when you, when you come to kind of transactions and contracts, and uh, then, uh, information technology, science, and so on, and you find to, uh, you, you identify the Makassib and apply them through the Makassib. This is something it works out in the kind of details, okay? You need to be worked out. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sharuk, and then uh, Dr. Sami al Dagestani. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Anjum. I hope I'm not abusing my position as co-host here by asking the question before uh, the other participants. But it's a follow-up question, uh, a methodological one. Um, and it's about uh, what you said. Uh, it was inspired uh, by your admitting that there are uncertainties in the way the maqasid is being uh, fleshed out or, or being used as a discourse at the moment. So you clearly say that it is not uh, an usul. Uh, it is uh, doesn't have its uh, methodical framework as of yet. Uh, but isn't this the reason um, as to why it has become attractive and popular? It's because it dilutes the link to the text uh, that the fiqh creates by making it possible to uh, to perhaps push the frontier of uh, of the fiqh in ways that the usul won't allow for. So perhaps the wider question is, in the context of secular modernity, are we using the maqasid uh, in order to overcome uh, the groundedness in the text that is creating some tensions, but without, without interrogating secular modernity and its demands upon us, but rather trying to find a solution and adapt the solution from within. I hope this is not too long long-winded. Um, yeah, uh, methodology uh, methodology remains a weak a weak aspect of the Makassi. But this has been developing. The reason I give so much detail about the types of Makassi, <coughs> about uh, the kind of uh, how you identify, how do you prioritize, one, how many types each one of them has its own characteristics and so on. To tell you that in 20th century, and so uh, even since the 1980s, the methodology of Makassid has also been developed. We do not have um, Makassid as enriched with methodology as we have the usul al -fiqh. We are not uh, having that, but we are not uh, now uh, in the same position like we were half a century ago. Like uh, people like uh, 
like uh, you know the scholars have been trying to work out like the people like Le Sunni has written uh, a book one or two others have written Tahir ibn Ashur has written an impressive book we have been doing works and uh, these are uh, developing and it helps to uh, tell uh, <clears throat> uh, the average man how to go about the makasi, uh, about the varieties of makasi, about the, uh, the um, accuracy with the makasi, the kind of uh, those details. I explained some, but we are <clears throat> not talking of usul al fiqh. We still have a weakness. Uh, with regard to the methodology of the Makasid. But uh, uh, maybe an advantage of the Makasid is that it is, a, to some extent, a common sense idea. It's not like the Usul al fiqh that throws you off your balance. It's a kind of, uh, every man can make some sense of the idea of the Makasid. And they, uh, you know, uh, apply it as a formula in their everyday life, we do. Uh, but when it comes to the kind of, uh, uh, the more complex application of the Makasid, there you have to have um, a methodology, you have to have uh, how to, the way of how to go about it, and not just to be mentioning Makasid all the time without working your way out. I hope I'm not repeating myself. Your question was a little, some aspect of it I didn't quite grasp, but maybe you can say it again if you like. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. That was helpful. I I'll come back if there are no more questions, but give uh, others a chance now. Inshallah. Um, Samuel Dagestani, please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for your lecture, Dr. Kamali. Uh, you spoke a little bit about usul al-fiqh and muqasid, and I'm also interested about the epistemological relationship between the two uh, on one hand, and also between maslaha, specifically in ethics, on the other. And my understanding is that maqasid, you know, obviously is not an independent from the legal scholarship, and similar can be said for ijtihad as not being exclusively a legal concept. Um, as for Maslaha, more specifically, thinking of the legal as being derived from the moral, how accurate is it then to claim that Maqasid and, by extension, Maslaha are, in essence, ethical concepts that are theorized within the moral law? Yes, Masaleh <clears throat> and Maqasid are often used synonymously. The <clears throat> Uh, Usul or Fepa scholars, they did not make much difference, distinguish between them. Uh, but there is, uh, I have drawn a distinction in my writing between the Masale and the Makasid. Mas the Maslaha, <clears throat> the end result of the, you know, uh, the Makasid are also after, uh, as I earlier mentioned, that. Uh, <clears throat> Is Dean Abdul Salam. Uh, he, in his book, uh, made the point that uh, all the maqasid uh, in, in the ahkam of the Sharia in their maqasid, the sum total is human welfare. Uh, this is the, the basic idea that is shared between the masale and the maqasid. But mas Makasid has a degree of uh, permanence, of, a firm of foothold in the Sharia. Uh, Maslaha is utilitarian. It is, both are subject to value judgment a little. The reason being that both of them are not, they do not have mm, this kind of uh, accurate methodology that uh, uh, we can uh, prevent value judgment in their application. Maslaha and Makasid are to some extent open to that. 
we do not have the methodological accuracy for them. But <clears throat> I say there is a distinction because the Makassid uh, are based uh, <clears throat> as the Makassid, Daruri, Haji, Tahsini, Daruri, tied to those Daruriyat, life, faith, religion, so on. And they are all based in the clear text of the Quran and Hadith or in, by Istikra, based in the uh, clear text. Uh, the Masalih are not always that. Uh, one type of Maslaha, which is the Maslaha Mutabara, the Masalih Mursala, Maslaha Mursala, unregulated Maslaha is just loose. It's not tied to a text. It is a uh, utilitarian. Whereas Maslaha Mutabara is that which is uh, related to a text. It has a textual grounding. Um, but otherwise, uh, the Makassid has a degree of kind of stability and permanence that Maslaha Masale may be lacking. But uh, the kind of uh, uh, the end result uh, in both uh, is not very. Part of one. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether oh, I answered wonderful. your question or you have. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's uh, it's. Yeah. I know it's late there for you, and and uh, and after many questions, that we will all begin to sound the same. But I think you're, you're doing extremely well. Thank you very much for for putting up with us. Um, there is a question in the chat. Could one say that the Makassid is a kind of Malaka uh, that the jurist embodies rather than being a separate framework? The kind of Malaka? Right. Is it, is it just a kind of uh, extra sense that a jurist has of what the law is trying to do that is already embodied in <coughs> the usul al fiqh based reasoning, if I understood the question correctly? Well, what when you look at the maybe that is that is that is perhaps an understanding. Makassid, that is what is all about. Uh, when the jurist is purposeful with what he is doing, he is a Makassid oriented. But when you look at the uh, jurisprudential aspect of the Makassid, uh, when you say Makassid, Daruri, Haji, or Tahsini. Uh, uh, these are more than this malaka. They have uh, external, you know, identification. The Jewish the ulama have identified it. Al-Shatibi has identified it. And these are, when you mention these five, Al-Ghazali identified the Zaruyat are five. Uh, Al-Karabi said there is one more. And maybe Al-Karadawi add one more and then it becomes a uh, Taimiya says something else. They may be they are inspired by the similar thinking, but they are also trying to give it an external uh, kind of manifestation that uh, you and I can look at it and make sense of it and what it is. It's not just the Jewish thought, but it's for um, it is Becoming part of it is part of our um, Islamic juristic thought, and it has um, uh, a kind of uh, an aspect that everyone can look at it and apply it and learn from it, not just the jurist and his own private thinking, so to speak. Okay, very interesting. So you're suggesting that when Makassid becomes a public public discourse of the jurists, it, it becomes more disciplined. That's um, yes. And wonder, that's what so, we have been doing in the last 40, 50 years, right. to give it that aspect. <clears throat> um, uh, there's another question, um, Rosina Raja, that what knowledge, uh, what knowledge is other than usul al fiqh, um, are necessary to develop good Makassid methodology? 
That's a great question, pedagogically. Who, how do you develop? How do you know what the, what the makasid are? Uh, what is necessary to develop the makasid methodology? Right. Is it, is it necessary? No, so the question is, what other knowledge should a scholar <clears throat> or theorist have, apart from fiqh and the sort of fiqh, the traditional stuff, uh, in order to develop uh, a Makassid framework? <clears throat> or what other knowledge? What we are talking of, of all kinds of knowledge. It can be uh, <clears throat> criminal law, it can be jurisprudence, it can be information technology, it can be science, it can be any branch in area of knowledge that lends itself to the ACE analysis. Does it have a purpose? And does it have an identifiable purpose? So the Makassid uh, is not tied to one area of knowledge or another. Uh, Makassid can relate to all area or any area of knowledge where the purpose identification is a, uh, is a reasonable approach. Uh, Makassid therefore has a kind of versatility that is uh, lacking in Usul al uh, In the sense, and maybe that is one of the attraction of the Makassid to modern generation, that uh, uh, it can relate to uh, different areas of learning, different kind of activities and occupation. Uh, it can be any area of knowledge, uh, so long as you are well informed about the details of the makasid, that the makasid are not just kind of uh, uh, open value judgment. They are related to the text, they are related to istikra, they are related to um, um, you know, uh, the primary makasid, the lawgiver makasid, and, uh, and those aspects of uh, knowledge, uh, or the, you might say that uh, <clears throat> the methodology of makasid need to be kept in mind, uh, but it can relate to uh, different areas of knowledge. If I could ask a couple of questions, or, or ra rather one, uh, with, with a couple of different aspects, my own. It, it seems to me that there is usually an assumption that maqasid is going to lead to improvement and liberation and progress, um, liberation from the limits of taqlid or limits of law in the past that's outdated. But why is it not considered that Makasid, uh, because as, as, as you very eloquently said a number of times, that it doesn't have a method uh, of its own. And of course, method has an advantage that it cannot be abused, right? That the purpose of having a method is that it, it creates a public uh, sort of imperative that everybody can recognize as opposed to subjective judgment. But Makasid is necessarily um, uh, you know, e even if we can recognize the label that we all need to protect uh, religion and life and so on, but its actual concretization is somewhat of a value judgment, uh, other than, you know, if it's not a value judgment, then it is just the law, uh, in which case, what's the point of Mokasid? But if it is a value judgment, uh, and if my assumption is correct, then why do we not worry that this could become a tool in the hands of authoritarian governments or bodies of elite who are trying to accumulate wealth and power for themselves? Uh, as the Arab countries today, for example, have demonstrated that that's precisely what they want to do. Uh, it seems that the great advantage of the historical tradition of, uh, of Madahib was that it had developed this authority of uh, with time uh, so that uh, it allowed 
uh, the jurists, the powerless jurists, otherwise socially, politically powerless jurists, to wield the authority of uh, of a great tradition uh, vis-a-vis even governments. But it seems that Maqasid gives that power uh, potentially uh, for the highest bidder or to the highest bidder. All right. Well, <clears throat> The advantage that Makassid brings is that uh, it informs you of, draws your attention to the purposes of what you are doing. A lot of people, you know, they do things without really identifying clearly uh, what are the purposes, the ultimate consequences, the ma'alat al afal the kind of uh, uh, that uh, uh, kind of uh, awareness that is generated by the Makasid, it does help to integration, it does help to um, to uh, knowledge development. Uh, it does help with uh, the kind of, if you are, uh, we are criticizing the tafsir of the Quran nowadays. Why? To some extent, because this is not, it does not integrate the maqasid. It uh, just look, looking it to the words of the text and meaning of the text, but does not tell us about the purposes. So you have informed in that aspect of the very existing knowledge, the tafsir of the Quran that has, uh, <clears throat> you know, exists in, in dozens and dozens in very large bulks and volumes. And yet we are now beginning to write, uh, why don't we write a Maqasid uh, Tafsir? So we are reaching now a stage of uh, an, a better, a more advanced stage of knowledge in that area. And that can be extended uh, to uh, other fields of science and knowledge. Uh, what we have now, as I said, one of the phases of the development, recent development of Makassid in the third phase was that it is being used as an evaluative principle, a criteria of evaluation what has been done in a way that does not serve its own purpose very well. In a lot of the interpretations that, uh, uh, whether it is the Quran or the Hadith or uh, the Fiqha and so on, that uh, <clears throat> are not purpose, it does not lead to its own purpose. That kind of uh, is part of the integration of knowledge, part of the the, the quest that uh, uh, we ought to be doing and uh, hopefully that it will uh, be a valuable uh, occupation and it is not, uh, you know, it's not really, that is an abuse of the Makasid to be open value judgment and in the hands of, you know, the misguided and make something, you know, um, uh, uh, unwanted uh, of the Makasa. But uh, <clears throat> when it is applied in a purposeful way, it is a, a big contribution to knowledge. I think that, uh, yes, there is this possibility of abuse, uh, and it is one of those areas. Maslaha has been one, and Makasa is another. And I don't think that the usul al fiqh is that much open to abuse, but uh, you can say maslaha is also part of the usul al fiqh. You can also uh, maybe uh, uh, twist uh, other formulas of the usul, like you can twist the as even, you can al sad al even. Uh, use it to the extent that you really block the way to good things. 
Uh, those abuses are possible, but I think Makasid and Maslaha is a little more open to it. But uh, we are developing, you know, we are aware of it, and we are developing better understanding of it and better uh, methods of uh, applying the Makasid to different areas of knowledge. Thank you very much. Dr. Shiru, please take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kamali. You've given us a lot of food for thought and uh, for all those who ask questions, uh, it has been uh, a wonderful start for hopefully a very fruitful conversation. And the beauty of this workshop as I see it uh, is that we're going to have a few days to mull over the questions so it's not too intense over a period of two days. Uh, I know you have waited patiently and I thank you again.